This video contains sequences of flashing lights. Hi, I'm Natasha, and in this video, I'll tell you the whole story about how I created my LED bike. This is an ongoing project that's come so far, but has so many possibilities to keep going too. So let me catch you up on what I've done so far. I'll share my journey from the initial concept to my first Arduino build, to switching to Microbit, to connecting it all with radio. Oh, and making a version of the project that's super beginner friendly so that you can make one too. It all started because my local bike club has light up bike rides that I had been going on for a few years. So making an LED bike was in the back of my mind. Then in 2020, I suddenly found myself with a lot of time on my hands. And I thought, <gasps> LED bike time. I wanted to define my bike as being a pixel bike, not diffusing the LEDs at all. I thought I would just accentuate the classic shape of the bicycle just in lights. I wanted people to see me riding by in the dark and be like, whoa, look at that LED bike. Now I could have just wrapped LEDs around my bike and called it a day, but I think a lot of LED projects end up looking pretty tacky when the LEDs are just placed haphazardly throughout the project. So my goal was to make my lights look dynamic, purposeful, and clean. I chose to use 30 pixel per meter waterproof NeoPixel strips. Having less pixels per meter meant it was cheaper to cover the distance of all the strips and less pixels would consume less power too. But the main reason that I chose 30 pixels per meter was for how it looks. Having more space between the pixels would help me define them from far away since distance is a type of diffusion too. And I wanted each pixel to be perceived separately. It's like how a bitmap image that's designed for individual pixels looks good, but a pixelated JPEG looks bad. So all this to say that being intentional about where I placed my LEDs and the distance between them would make my animations more dynamic. For more on choosing NeoPixels, check out my video linked above. As for the wheels, my original thought was to place the LEDs around the outer rim of the bike. The string type LEDs could be a solution, and I plan to experiment with adding them in the future. But back in 2020, I couldn't get my hands on these strings at a reasonable price. So I had to look within. The wheel. I like the look of those persistence of vision displays that you can buy for inside of a bike wheel. But our light up rides are really slow and you need a lot of speed to get those to look right. And since I was most interested in making colorful patterns and not graphic animations, I thought about how I could make the sticks of light on my wheel look good when the wheel is spinning at all different speeds and when the wheel is stopped. I decided to add three LED sticks to each wheel. Three was the perfect number because it makes a triangle, which I think looks good no matter what configuration it comes to rest in. And it creates some visual balance on the wheel when you perceive the lights as lines as they spin around. So those were the goals for the design. Let me show you how I put it all together. I started by measuring the bike and creating a map of the lengths in my notebook. I chose to create three strips per side, cutting two strips in the middle and making joints with three wire cable to continue the line in a new direction. For more on cutting and wiring NeoPixel strips, check out the video linked above. I plan to put the controller on the handlebars so all of the strips would start at that location, and I'd need to create two of each length to mount LEDs on both sides of the bike. I'll talk about the microcontroller connections in a bit, but the plan was to connect each strip and its mirror image to the same pin. So I had three sets of twin strips of LEDs to control. Then I added another strip to go across the handlebars, so I'll have four pins on my microcontroller connected to strips. I chose to attach the LED strips to rope light channels so that I could draw the straight lines of the bike silhouette, even in places on my bike that were curved because if the pixel strip followed around the ridges of the bike, each pixel dot would be perceived as uneven from the side, and I wanted to avoid that. So attaching the strips to a stick would allow each pixel to be spaced evenly visually and keep the lines clean and straight. So I placed the soldered strips inside the rope light channels. 
I might have chosen a different product to mount the LEDs, but it was 2020 and I had limited shopping options. So to make these channels work, I added heat shrink over the ends and also added some small bands of heat shrink throughout the strip so it wouldn't fall out. As for the wheels, it was a bottleneck of wires. To make three strips in each wheel that were viewable from both sides, I needed to connect six strips together. But they would all show the same animation, so they were more than twins, they were sextuplets! I connected all of the power, ground, and data wires from each stick, then connected them to the wires from the other sticks, and finally added one connector to plug into my microcontroller. To house the electronics in the wheels, I thought I was being so smart by purchasing some waterproof credit card cases that were sold for the beach. The electronics fit perfectly inside, but after just a few rides, the clasps failed and sent the electronics flying. So I quickly slapped together a pouch made of tablecloth material and duct tape right before a light up ride. And despite my plans to update this design, it's remained my solution for holding my electronics for the past two years. I just replace the duct tape when it gets dirty. So I guess the theme of this video is simplicity works. To attach the strips to the bike frame and wheels, I used Velcro cable ties every 10 inches or so. This way, the strips were connected to the bike securely, but are also easy to remove so that I could bring them inside to repair or update them. For the first few months, I removed the LEDs between light-up rides. But after I was sure the design looked right, I weatherproofed the strips by adding some additional waterproof heat shrink that had some glue inside to make the connection extra watertight. You could also add some hot glue to regular heat shrink before shrinking for a similar effect. In some places where I made a repair and didn't want to remove the strip, I just covered the section with some silicone caulk and that seemed to work pretty well too. Now I had a durable, easily removable set of LED strips in that classic bike silhouette shape. It's the perfect playground for my LED animations and it'll last a long time. So let's talk about how to control these lights. For my microcontroller, I chose an Arduino Nano 33 IoT because it's small and had an onboard radio to wirelessly sync the wheels. I made a little breadboard compatible perf board to collect all of my NeoPixel strip wires and make the whole thing easy to plug in. I used the perf board to marry the connectors from the same strip on both sides of the bike and connected those sets of strips to individual pins on the Arduino so that I could address them in the code. I started with the examples from an Arduino library aptly named Fast LED to get my pixels turned on and animating super fast. As soon as I confirmed that my pixels were all lighting up and working properly, I added a number pad to let me select the animation and put it all in a box powered by a USB battery pack. I found a handful of great tutorials that helped me do this and I'll share the links to them in the description. Then it was time to debut the bike at the Bike JC ride. Everyone was like, whoa, how did you do that? I really yeah. like it. Thanks. And it just keeps changing colors kind of automatically. Yeah, so I programmed each of these buttons to yep. do a different thing. Okay. So that's why I've been like, I wanted to be able to ride and change it up a bit, you know? Exactly. Yeah, so this worked out good because like, you know, I, I just memorized what I wanted, but you know, like these are just different color combinations in this row. And then these are the like flash. And that conversation kept going. I was super happy with the response, so I didn't stop there. Next, I wanted to see if I could make the NeoPixel animations react to music. I started with the simplest solution by connecting a headphone splitter to my boombox and an analog pin on my Arduino, and mapped the audio signal, which is basically the volume, to the LED animation. This was far from a VU meter that visualizes the music based on frequency, but it was still a nice first try at seeing the bike react to music. If you want to learn more about creating a VU meter with NeoPixels, you'll like my NeoPixel Christmas tree video. I'll put a link to that for you to check out as well. At the same time, I was working on syncing the wheel animations with the frame. I had some trouble with this one. Writing radio communication code between the Arduino Nanos was a new skill for me, and despite reading everything I could on the topic, I couldn't get the Arduinos to stay connected to one another. Come on! Yeah! Oh. But then, just as I was struggling with this, I was assigned to make a Microsoft Make Code tutorial, and I saw this. Da 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 da! 
the radio block. I started playing with the radio connection between micro bits and found that it was very reliable. It's a simpler radio and all I needed to do was communicate which animation to play. So it was simply the best. You're simply the best. Also at this time, my ride mates were asking me to teach them how to create their own LED bike setups. So I was planning an Arduino class. Arduino is wonderful, but for absolute beginners, block coding and micro bit would be easier to teach and get to the fun part of designing custom animations faster. So I made the difficult decision to switch the entire project to micro bit. How great is it that NeoPixels work with so many microcontrollers? I was able to make the switch and keep all the same pixels on my bike, but I did need to recreate the controller. I would need to redo the connections to the micro bit, so I used it as an opportunity to switch the strip connectors to these durable and waterproof ones. Since the NeoPixels on the bike are now waterproofed, I could leave them on the bike 24-7 and just bring the controller inside. I soldered all of the connectors to a proto board with resistors to smooth out any spikes in the data line. This is recommended by the Adafruit NeoPixel Uber Guide, a tutorial with many useful tips for working with NeoPixels, which I'll link to below. I wrapped all of the connectors in a huge piece of weather resistant heat shrink to make one big durable connector. Then I soldered all of the connections to a Pi Moroni pin bit breakout board, which I chose for its small form factor. Breakout boards like this make it easy to access more than just the 0, 1, and 2 pins on the micro bit. I also added a small 8 pixel NeoPixel stick to display the current animation, so I could see what animation was playing while riding my bike. I laser cut a few pieces of acrylic to house the electronics. A top piece to hold the micro bit and NeoPixel strip, a middle piece to hold the proto board and breakout board together, and a third piece to create a place for my LiPo battery. Plastic standoffs hold the pieces together, and I added a Velcro loop to attach the whole assembly to the bike. To my surprise, this controller is the part of the bike that I get asked about the most. The tiny LED stick illuminates the acrylic and it looks really cool from far away. I love how a design feature that I made for user feedback ended up being an aesthetic win too. What a happy accident. Now let's talk about the code. To code the micro bit, I used Microsoft Make Code. I learned to code in Arduino, which is text-based. So switching to block coding was honestly a bit confusing. The code is on islands and the blocks have slightly different names. But once I got the hang of it, I realized that I could code simple interactions in a fraction of the time that I could type them out in Arduino and likely lose time to forgetting a comma or curly bracket, you know. If you want to learn more about how to code NeoPixels with Microsoft Make Code 2, watch my Creative LEDs video series from the beginning. My bike build was, well, a little more complicated than the simple strip example in the series. So here's how I set up Make Code for all of my NeoPixel strips. In Make Code, I named each of the four strips after the pin they were connected to and set them up as NeoPixel strips with the number of LEDs on each. I also created ranges of LEDs. That's helpful when you want to animate part of a strip separately from the rest. You could use this to define each segment of the bike to keep track of it separately. Or in this example, I went a bit crazy making an animation with very specific LEDs in each group based on their location across the bike. So I can make wipe effects like this. I think it looks pretty cool. I've tried out many animation ideas over the past few years, so here are a few tips that I've found helpful for configuring NeoPixels in Make Code. Using the hue, saturation, and luminosity instead of the built-in color picker is a huge upgrade. I set and change the color using the numerical color from the color wheel in my functions. And playing with changing the luminosity lets me animate the brightness of the LEDs and make fades, comet, and wave type effects. I also defined my favorite colors and made a color chart for my bike group so that we could explore creating animations that show the same color when we sync up. For more on this, check out the link to my blog post in the description. Just like in my tutorial series, I experimented with different animations and then organized them into functions that I could select with a mode switcher using the built-in micro bit buttons on the controller. And I used the buttons to send the mode over radio to my wheels and helmet. 
So let me show you just a few of my favorites. Most people refer to this one as like a Larson scanner. This one looks like a comet flying through the sky. This one is just all the CMYK colors sparkling. This one was inspired by my memory of what it's like to ride Space Mountain. And you can also create something more serene like this wave. What animations would you like to see? I plan to keep making more, so let me know in the comments. And finally, I added one more piece to the puzzle, my helmet. I originally used my white helmet and added string neopixels inside each of the holes to create this effect. But the helmet was also the perfect starter project that I could use to teach neopixels to my group and to you. Wrapping a single pixel strip around the helmet was not only super simple, but it would also help new coders understand the rotate pixels block as the pixels are literally in a circle. If you've ever wanted to make something with LEDs, I hope you'll follow my series and make something awesome. And you can join the conversation on Discord to share what you've made and ask questions about how to get there. So this is where I am now, but what's next? There's so much more that I want to add to this project. I want to try out putting the LEDs around the perimeters of the wheels. I want to try making music reactive animations. I want to update the controller to have more buttons so that I can control it easier. And I want to add more lights to my body so that I can have a full light display on myself as well. There's so much more to make, so subscribe to follow along with me as I continue with this project. Until then, Go watch the full Creative LEDs series, and I'll see you on Discord. Happy making! <laughs>